Ahoy desu zenka. This is the world's first three-axis PTZR 4K AI-powered camera, Opsbot Tail 2. It's a versatile, high-quality live production camera. You can see the massive lens here. It is packed with features for live events, education, content creation, live streaming, and sports. If someone is looking for great value for the money, this would be the choice. In this tutorial, I will explain how to use it with a smartphone while testing all features for those who are not familiar with this camera. This video is brought to you by Opsbot. Let's jump into Opsbot Start App. Once you connect Tail2, you will select connection method. You can use Wi-Fi or cellular data. Cellular data will be faster. It's going to connect to your phone via hotspot. It's not going to use internet. Then you will hit camera to get to the filming interface. The first icon on the left below the home button will take you to camera settings. You can film in automatic or manual mode. In automatic mode, you can adjust exposure. Below is where you can adjust the autofocus setting. You can select if you want single, center, or manual focus. By default, it is set to center. If you film in a place where you encounter flickering light, you can change it to 50 or 60 hertz to remove it with this icon on the left. The next icon will flip the camera horizontally, and this one will enable grid lines. The HDR video option is next, then it is auto exposure lock, and then focus control. You can set the focus to global, face, or foreground. If you select face focus, for example, if I block my face with my hand, it will still focus on my face. If I change it to foreground, the hand will be in focus. Once I move it away, it will change to my face. Further right is where you can choose the picture style. The choices are standard, outdoors, pastel, and custom, where you can change lots. You can control sharpness, contrast, saturation, hue, and brightness. Again, here you can accept the settings or reset them on the left. The next icon is going to take you to a gallery where you can see all the recordings. If I play, for example, this clip, you can see the video. If you drag the red rectangle to the right, you can see the photo. You can download the clip to your phone, delete or upload it to a cloud. The first icon on the left will let you switch between horizontal and vertical mode. When you look into a lens, you can see how it all turns around. Let's bring it back to horizontal mode. Let's talk about tracking before we go to AI settings. To enable tracking, double tap on the screen. Now, when I move around, the camera is tracking me. You will disable it the same way. If you want to track a specific object, you can just drag around. I have tested the tracking and I can say it's very good. If the object gets blocked, it will not lose tracking. Let's hit the AI settings icon. The first icon controls human tracking right now. You can select if you want to track only one person or the whole group. If you select an object to track on the screen, the icon will change into object tracking. To get back the human tracking control icon, Simply drag around a human to enable tracking. Once you disable tracking, you can see it's back. Me icon is for human tracking. The next icon controls the distance. If you track an object, you can enable close-up. If you track a person, you can adjust portrait framing size and perform out of zoom. So for example, if I select three and move further away, the camera will automatically zoom in on me to keep the same frame. When I move closer to the camera, it will zoom out to maintain the same frame. The next icon takes you to tracking speed controls. Here you can enable any of those speeds. Here is super lazy. The camera moves slowly. And here is the opposite crazy. The tracking is fast. Custom mode lets you control pan speed and tilt speed. 
You can also enable auto mode. The next icon lets you adjust face framing. You will see two yellow lines. If you move the horizontal line up and down, you will adjust up and down frame. If you move the vertical line, you will move the frame to the sides. You can accept the new settings or reset to the default center. The next icon lets you enable tracking range or if you press and hold, you can set tracking range. To move the camera, hit the gimbal icon. You will see a joystick that you can move around. If you find the movement too fast or too slow, you can change the speed below. If you drag it to the left, the gimbal will move slowly. If you drag it to the right, it will move faster. Let's disable the gimbal to show you another way you can move the camera around. When you tap on the screen and hold, this red circle will pop up. Then you just drag with your finger on the screen to move the camera around. Let's move to the next icon that will take you to positions. How do you save a position? Simply move the camera to frame the first position, then press and hold the P1 to save the position. You can also delete the position here by pressing and holding. This pop-up shows up with the option to delete. You can then move the camera to another position and press and hold P2 to save the second position. Let's return to this icon. If you press, it will reset the camera to the default position. If you want to have a different default position, move the camera to frame the shot, then press and hold to set to a new default position. To zoom in and out, press and hold the icon on the right side until zoom wheel will show up. You can then use the arrows to zoom in and out or the wheel. I find the wheel easier and more precise. You can zoom in up to 12 times. When you hit the record button, you can start recording or live streaming. Let's just select record to SD card. Once you hit start, it will start recording. You can also take a photo while you are recording. Once you stop recording, you will see two icons instead of one. If you just press shortly, it will start and stop recording. If you press and hold, it will take you back to the recording menu. Let's hit the three dots and take a look at all settings. Let's go to preset mode. When you hit edit, you can name the preset and enable any of these controls. Mirror image, HDR mode, enable auto exposure, adjust shutter speed, ISO, white balance, anti-flicker, picture style, and human tracking. AI settings are next. Here is where you can enable gesture controls. There are three gestures. Select target, record, and zoom. You can also adjust the zoom speed below. Let me show you how to use them. This gesture is to enable or disable tracking. This is to start and stop recording, and this is the last gesture to control zoom. Tracking settings let you control if you want only pan or tilt tracking. You can lock the pan axis or the tilt axis. If you will be using an external microphone, in audio settings, you can enable mic input. Linear input is for a connected audio mixer, for example. Camera settings are next. The first one is for outer focus. You can select global, face, or foreground focus. The next setting is for face auto exposure. When it is off and you have a window behind you, for example, your face will be quite dark. If you enable this, the camera will make sure your face is lit up correctly. It will slightly brighten up. The last camera setting takes you to ISO upper and lower limits, where you can select the preferred ISO range. Another section covers output settings. UVC means that the camera will be recognized by the computer as webcam. NDI mode allows camera to transmit high quality, low latency video, and audio over a network. 
you need to purchase NDI key through Opsbot store. RSTB mode is also a network protocol, but it is much more delayed compared to NDI. Another mode is SRT, which is supported only with Wi-Fi or wired connections. Media settings are next. Here you can select encoder, resolution, frame rates, bitrate for recording, NDI, RTSP and SRT modes and live streaming. 4K allows you to record up to 60 frames per second. 1080p gives you also 120 frames per second. Another setting is for 3G SDI output. There are two levels, A and B. Gimbal settings are next. You can manually roll axis with this control. If you want to reset, just hit this icon. General settings are next. Let's go to tail two settings. Power on recording allows you to record as soon as you turn on the camera. You don't have to press the record button. The same goes for power on live streaming. Auto power off will shut off the camera after 5, 15 or 30 minutes. Timed power off lets you enable schedule when the camera will power off. You can select certain days and times. The same goes for timed power on. Status light can be dimmed here or disabled. Battery light can be disabled. Tele light also allows you to adjust brightness or disable it. You can disable buzzer. Another setting you can enable is plug, unplug to power on and off. Live broadcasting setting lets you select default streaming method. SD card tells you how much space you have left and you can format the card here. Preset position switching speed lets you adjust how fast you want to go from position 1 to 2, for example. Let's do a slower speed and here is faster speed. If you are filming a very long video, you can let the camera split the video based on the size. You can select from 4 GB to 64 GB. If you are using external control like a joystick, you can adjust all these settings under control protocol. Restored factory setting is next and information about device. Here you can change device name. Computer software Opsbot Center is quite similar. It just looks slightly different. There are even more options available, but I will cover that in another video. For those interested, link to Opsbot TL2 can be found below the video in a video description. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video informative and don't forget to subscribe for more. I will see you in one of those videos next. Ciao. Ahoy.